heavens, what is to become of us? What are we to do? Mm, I remember when I was a girl. I cried for two days together when Colonel Miller's regiment went away. I thought I should have broke my heart. Well, I'm sure I shall break mine. If we could but go to Bright. Mm. Papa is so disagreeable. <gasps> a little sea bathing would set me up forever. Mrs. Forster has invited me as her particular friend to go with her to Brighton. Ah! Colonel Forster is to take a house for us. Oh, Lydia, I am so happy. Oh, what an honour to be so singled out. <laughs> Isn't that unfair, Lizzie? Mrs. Forster should have asked me as well as Lydia. I may not be her particular friend, but I have just as much right to be asked as she has. Ha, 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 ha. And more, too, for I'm two years older. Do not let her go, Father. She is so impetuous, and the temptations of Brighton must be greater than home. Lydia will never be easy until she's exposed herself in some public place or other, and we can never expect her to do it at so little expense as under the present circumstances. If you were aware, Father, of the very great disadvantage to us all, which must arise from Lydia's unguarded and imprudent manner, which has already arisen from it, I'm sure you would judge differently. Already arisen? Or does she frighten away some of your lovers? Poor well, little Lizzie. Oh, now, don't be cast down. Such squeamish youths as cannot bear to be acquainted with a little um, absurdity are not worth a regret. Come, show me a list of the pitiful fellows who've been kept aloof by Lydia's folly. Indeed, you are mistaken. I have no injuries to resent. I speak of general, not particular evils. Our position as a family, our very respectability is called into question by Lydia's wild behaviour. Excuse me, I must speak plainly. If you do not take the trouble to check her, she will soon be beyond the reach of amendment. Her character will be fixed, and she will at 16 be the most determined flirt that ever made herself and her family ridiculous. Without any attraction beyond youth and a tolerable person. You know that Kitty follows wherever Lydia leads. To be vain, ignorant, idle and absolutely uncontrolled. Don't you see that they will be censured and despised wherever they are known? And that they will involve their sisters in their own disgrace? Does he, does he come here? Don't make yourself uneasy, my love. Wherever you and Jane are known, you must be respected and valued. And you will not appear to any less advantage for having a couple or, I may say, three very silly sisters. We shall have no peace at Longbourn if Lydia does not go to Brighton. Colonel Forster is a sensible man. He will keep her out of any real mischief. And luckily, she's too poor to be an object of prey to anyone. Common flirts are too a penny in Brighton. The officers will find women better worth their notice. Let us hope, in fact, that her stay in Brighton, the teacher, her own insignificance. She said she can hardly grow any worse. If she does, we'd be obliged to lock her up for the rest of her life. How did you find Rosings? Very interesting. Colonel Fitzwilliam was there with Mr. Darcy. Are you at all acquainted with the Colonel? I, um... To some respect, yes, in former years. Very gentlemanly man. How did you like him? I liked him very much indeed. How long was Mr. Darcy at Rosings? Ah, uh, nearly three weeks. And you saw him frequently? Yes, Mr. Wickham, almost every day. His manners are very different from his cousins. Yes. But I think Mr. Darcy improves on closer acquaintance. Is it in a dress that he improves? Has he deigned to add aught of civility to his ordinary style? For I dare not hope that he has improved in essentials. Oh, no. In essentials, I believe he is very much what he ever was. Ah. I don't mean to imply that either his mind or his manners are changed for the better. From knowing him better, I understand him better. I rejoice that he is wise enough to assume even the appearance of what is right. It must deter him from such foul conduct as I have suffered by. I 
Imagine this newfound cautiousness is merely adopted on his visits to his aunt, of whose good opinion and judgment he stands very much in awe. A good deal is to be imputed to his wish of forwarding his match with Miss de Bird. I shall write every day of what I am doing and make you wild with envy. Oh! Well, I must go. Goodbye, Jane. Goodbye, Lizzie. Oh, my dear girl. Take every opportunity of enjoying yourself. Bye. Bye. <laughs>